What's up, people? What's up? This is the one and only K fucking Solo. All right? And this is Rikers Island Stories, the AKA K Solo Show. Listen, today, I don't know how to say it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of upset. And in one way, I'm kind of happy. You know, um, hey, they finally found the guy. They finally found the murderers who killed Jam Master J. Yo, all day, every day. <coughs> That's right, Jam Master J. The the people that murdered the three people that murdered Jam Master J. I think it was three or two. They got caught. They got caught for killing Jam Master J. And I, deep down inside, I am a man. And when I am wrong, I am wrong, and I'm and I gotta apologize to someone. And I'm gonna put it out there. I'm gonna put it on YouTube. Who I'm apologize to? And I gotta apologize to Prince. You know Prince, the Prince Supreme T Show. Yes, for Queens. Yes, that man. I gotta apologize because all these fucking years, for twenty years almost. I'm thinking that Prince has something to do with Jam Master J's murder. Just like a lot of other people. Let's keep it real. A lot of you people thought that because simple reason why I thought that. Because one, <coughs> Jam um, Prince went to everybody. He went to step to Jam Jay-Z, Damon Dash, and told him, yo, don't hire this dude. Don't sign this dude. He went to, um, I think he went to, he called like two or three uh, record labels and told these people don't don't hire them if you hire them you're gonna have problems with me and I think the record labels got got very scared to sign 50 cents that's why 50 cents didn't get signed when he came home after he got shot it took him a little while to get signed because motherfuckers were scared to sign him let's keep it real I don't give a fuck who you are if I see an artist and this artist is nice I'm gonna fucking sign him I don't care if you got beef with him. That's between you and him. It don't got nothing to do with my pockets. You feel me? Now, once that man is down in your team, you're supposed to take care of that man because that man is a part of your team. You eat because of that man. You make money because of that man. You dress up your kids because of that man. You in your house warm, cozy because of that man. Because you cannot front anything that 50 Cent came out with when... Platinum. The man is a fucking a god when it comes to writing records. When it comes to rhymes, the man is a god. Okay? Just like Eminem, a god. Just like Biggie, a god. Just like Big Pun, a god. Just like Fat Joe, a god. You know, I could name you more and more and more and more and more. Jay-Z, a god. Motherfucking um, Jada, a god. These are people that were born to be rappers. And 50 Cent was born to be a rapper. And when you are a rapper, when you got something that you know you got it, you ain't going to let it go for nobody. And I got to give it to Eminem, and I got to give it to Dre for signing 50. Because a lot of you motherfuckers out there was shook. Shook, shook, shook. The whole Rockefeller industry was shook. Oh, I ain't almost signed him. You got to be with him. Okay, I ain't, I ain't going to fuck with him, Prince. That's my word. But then what they do, they go sign this other dude that Rockefeller tried to put a cut on that and they still sign them. Didn't get no respect to Jay-Z. Didn't get no respect to Damon Dash. Look it up because I know a lot of motherfucking motherfuckers is going to say, what are you talking about? My haters. It's going to be, what are you talking about? Look it up. Like I did. But now, this is where the story gets a little fucked up. I am hurt. I am fucking hurt. Jam Master J broke my heart. For 20 years, I've been saying, yo, these dudes killed Jam Master J because Jam Master J was trying to give 50 cents a chance. No, it was nothing like that. It was because Jam Master J cut this nigga off on a 10 kilo business deal. 10 kilos. Somewhere, somehow, he had his man 
or whatever the fuck, he cut him off, and he said, fuck you, let me cut this nigga off, let me make more money for me, and that's it. And what happened? His man didn't go for it. Fuck you talking about, you gonna cut me off? What he did? He went to his motherfucking house, where his studio was at, and murdered them. Killed them. Something that a lot of yous out there would have done. A lot of you people out there would have done the same thing if Jam Master J would have dissed you on 10 kilos. You would have went after him. Matter of fact, you would have went after him for a fucking... You would have tried to kill him for a fucking half a kilo. That's how thirsty motherfuckers are nowadays. And niggas are thirsty. Believe me, dudes are thirsty. And what surprises me, that a man like Jam Master J, who many people loved and cared and cried, thought that he was innocently killed. And there was nothing like that. He was dealing with cocaine, bringing cocaine to other countries, or to, to New York. I mean, I always said this, man. In the drug business, you're going to get three things. Three things you're going to get in the drug business. I, I always live, live with this motherfucking philosophy. You ready? One. You sell drugs, you're going to get rich. That's maybe one. Two. You sell drugs, you got a 100% chance you're going to jail. That's two. Three. You sell drugs and you're successful, you're going to fucking get murdered. That's my three. You make it, you go to jail, or you get murdered. I want to make it. After that, I'm cutting quits. And then I go legal. But dudes don't do that. But dudes get greedy. You know, dudes will still want to chase that pussy. Niggas want to, no, nah, no, nah, fuck that. Everybody know my name. So if I stop selling drugs, everybody going to forget me. Fuck that. Let that them forget you, son. You got two, three million dollars stash. You got $10 million stash, $5 million stash, whatever you got. Stash it. And make something out of that money, B. Buy yourself a little sneaker store. Buy a little two by four, a little closet. And sell sneaker store, Jordans. And sell what's in style. T-shirts. You, know, you can make your own fucking T-shirts nowadays, man. Look at the niggas that make FUBU. Look at the dudes that make FUBU. Look at Michael Jordan. Oh, it takes a little money. And if I would have money, I would have the best four, I would have five guys drawing pair of sneakers. The top ten, they got to draw ten. Ten drawings of sneakers. And I would call them solos. No question. Fuck that. I call them solos or riberas. You know, sound a little nice. You know what I'm saying? Or you get a nice name for them, whatever. Now, you got a business, man. Now you got a, a store business. And you can sell your shit. And you can go legal. Next thing you know, you buy another one in the Bronx. Then you buy one in Manhattan. You buy one in Queens. One in Staten Island. Man, next thing you know, bro, you got two or three all over this, the, the ballrooms, man. You got like five stores in every ballroom. And then you take that shit to motherfucking Florida. You feel me? Call that shit Sneaker Palace. You know? Sneaker Palace. Sneaker World. Whatever, man, is yours. Because you was doing, you was in the game, you retired. John Master J could have done that. He was a DJ, a very successful DJ who worked with the best two MCs in the world. Two, three pioneers. Jam Master J. Come on. What happened? Was his money running low? I mean, was it, I, I know Ron DMC was doing was doing extra, extra shows on the side. Plus, Ron had that TV show. DMC got the podcast. That's very successful. Jam Master J was still in the music trying to get rappers. He, he almost got 50 Cent. That would have been a gold mine. And it also would have been a little headache. Because 50 is crazy. I love that motherfucker. But he's crazy. <laughs> I like 50. 50. Lane Keys love you, bro. Trust me. We got we got love for you, kid. 
You know, that's right, Fitty. Kane's got love for you, bro. Anyway, I am really, really, really a little upset about that, man. That I'm thinking that my man died because of some bullshit. Because some dude didn't want it 50 cents to eat. And then I find out the true story. It was over 10 fucking kilos that Jam Master J cut one nigga off. Said, nah, I got this. Or cut him off or took the deal, something like that. I'm not even going to verify what it was, but I know it was of a deal. And yeah, they said that Jack Master J cut one of them off. So that means that he must have like, yo, son, I don't need you for this. Or, yo, you ain't getting down with this. Or, yo, you're not getting, you're not going to eat out of this. So, you know, you might well go home. I don't need you for this one. 10 kilos. But all of a sudden, you don't need me. Or maybe the dude had the business for the 10 kilos. Who knows? Jack Master J already probably had that already in the house. Didn't they rob him? Then they they didn't take shit. They didn't take no rec no 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 equipment. Thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment. Did they take his chain? Did they rob his pocket? I don't think so. So when somebody does that, it's personal. Personal. Well, because if it would have been me, you know, personal or not, still going in your pocket and your chain, taking everything. I'm not being hey, fuck that. I was that, you know, not now. That was that crazy motherfucking solo 30, 40 years ago. Not now. Now I'm, I'm not with that. I would see that shit like that. I'm out of there. Because, uh, you know, violence is not for me no more. Thank God. Thank God that I learned my lessons when I got shot three times for my man. Three times. I don't take off my shirt because I don't want to show, you know what I'm saying, my fat. You know what I'm saying? Plus, I don't want to show the scars that I got over here. One bullet shot over here, one bullet shot over here, one in the back. I don't want to show that, you know what I'm saying? You know, I don't want to do that. Maybe one day I'll do it. Who knows? But, but not now. You feel me? Too early. So, yo, it's like I'm grieving right now again. It's just like Jam Master J just died today. And we find out who was it. One of the dudes who was 18 years old when it happened. That nigga what? 38 years old right now. Never coming home if he was the trigger man. And most likely the youngest motherfucker's gonna be the trigger man. That's what you there for to earn your points. Cause the old G's gonna tell him straight out the back. Yo, hit the gap, burn him. After you burn him, you got your points, baby. I know I'm an old G. And I used to be that young kid. Go ahead. Show me what you got. And if you don't show me what you got, I might not even leave from that spot, son. I'm, I'm staying with money, grit that they're about to kill. Or, I just, depending who I know, I just can't hang out no more. That's the life that I grew up with, man. I grew up with my blacks, Spanish, Puerto Ricans, and blacks. There was no Dominicans, no Mexicans. It was just Puerto Ricans and blacks. Yeah, sometimes I just see when I was growing up, I had to see how Puerto Ricans and black to go at it. But the next thing you know, the next day, they're all fucking playing stickball. They're all playing dominoes. They're all drinking motherfucking. At that time, it was Miller. Miller and Budweiser. Believe me, I grew up in that shit. I grew up in the teenager times and shit with the gazelles and the deeders and the electric boogies and all that crazy shit. I met people in my life. In my life, I was fortunate. That I met a lot, a lot of famous people, and I gotta give it to the my because of my profession, the the security and the bouncing. I told you guys, I could have, I could have went straight with guns. I could have had a gun on me, I licensed guns. I could have, I could have been licensed. 